Okay, uh, in today's lesson we're going to look at running a t-test on uh, two samples, so a two-sample t-test. And I know a lot of you have been trying to do this on your data where you want to break your groups up by your yes-no questions, your dichotomous questions, in this case uh, question three, and you're having difficulties running it in StatCrunch, probably because you're asking StatCrunch to maybe run a t-test on you know, column one and column three, uh, and it doesn't understand that it can't do that because to run a two sample t test it has to run it on two different columns of numerical data quantitative data so you could run it on q1 and q2 but since those are two completely different questions that's kind of a, a silly analysis to do what a lot of you want to do and it's a it's a it's a good thing to try is to see if your two groups differ by their answers to question three. So they, they answer yes, you put them in one group. They answer no, you put them in another group. And you want to see if those two groups now have different group means when you're measuring one of your two quantitative uh, questions. Well, that's a great thing to analyze, but StatCrunch can't do it with data in this format. What you have to do is you have to separate your data out. StatCrunch can only run a t-test on two columns of numerical data. So you have to, let's say if you want to see if your groups differ on this first test, uh, I'm sorry, this first question, then what you're going to have to do is uh, take all of this data, uh, sort it you know, by yes and no, and put all of the no's in one column and all of the yeses in another column, and then StatCrunch can run a two sample t-test on those two columns. So the first thing we're going to have to do, and this is kind of a pain to do in StatCrunch, so if you have Excel and you're good at working in Excel, I would highly suggest that you just um, copy all of your data, move it over into Excel, sort it there, separate it out, and then copy it back to StatCrunch. But uh, if you don't want to work in Excel and you want to do it all here, it's not too bad. It's just a little bit more labor intensive than Excel. So here's what you got to do. Go into Data, go down to Sort, it's going to ask for which columns you want to sort. And you really want to sort all of them because remember, each one of these rows represents one person. So you need to keep all of their responses together because they're all tied to one particular respondent. So we're going to sort all four of them. You can just uh, hold down Shift and click on one and four, or you can hold down Control and click on all four. But in any case, you want to highlight all four. And then we're going to sort it by the thing that we want to group them. And since we want to group them by question three, that's what we're going to sort it by. OK, hit Compute. It tells you that all of this new stuff has been done. OK, great. And then if you click up here, it puts it in, right? So wherever you click, it, it so these are my four new sorted columns. You'll notice that they put the yes, no's first, and then now Q1, Q2, and Q3 afterwards. OK, so we're almost there. Uh, so these are all the numbers of the people who said no. You see, you can just simply scroll down until the no's stop. And in this case, I had a lot more no's than yeses in this uh, set of sample data. So keep going, keep going. Oh, finally. Okay, so there's all the no's. Then I can control C and I'm going to give myself a, a, a break. I'm just going to put them over here just a couple columns away. Control V. So those are my no's. Uh, and I'm going to even label it no. Okay, then I can go back over to this column and I can page down to where the yeses are and I can highlight all of those to control C go back up to the top put it here in this next one I'm going to call those yes and now I have two sets of numerical data quantitative data they basically represent the answers to question one and they're broken up into the two groups those who said no and those who said yes and even though these two groups have hugely different numbers right we saw there was a hundred and about thirty or so in one and fifteen twenty in the other that's okay for doing a two sample t-test so now we can go to stat 
t-statistics, two sample t-statistics with data. And this is where it's asking you for where is your data. So my sample one is the no people, right? The sample two are the yes people. Uh, do we want to pull our variances or not? Uh, I'm just going to say no. If you want to pull the variances, you can try that as well. Um, here's your hypothesis test, right? We're going to, our null hypothesis is that the difference is equal to zero, i.e. they're the same. And then the null or the alternatives that they're not the same, right? We could change it to a greater than or less than type of thing. Um, or we could compute a confidence interval. But for right now, we're just going to do the hypothesis test. So we're going to simply hit compute. And there are our results. So mu1 are the no's, right? Mu2 are the yeses and we can see that the sample difference is negative 7.6 and the only reason why it's a negative is because in this case uh, the mu twos had a higher mean right so when we took one, one minus two we ended up getting a negative number but this is what matters over here our t statistic and our p-value so if we set alpha to be 0.05 which seems to be pretty standard we can see that with an alpha of 0.018 we would now reject the null. So these two groups do in fact have statistically different means at an alpha of 0.05. In fact, it, it has that at an alpha of even 0.02. So that's uh, the basics of a two-sample uh, t-test. Hope that helps.